I received a question the other day on a video about tillage and what we do on our operation for tillage and my thoughts on it. Ironically, that was the video that got deleted or taken down by YouTube. Uh, what I'm standing here in front of right now is a Glencoe uh, soil saver. I actually uh, purchased this uh, I, from up north around Minnesota, probably around 2008. And I was not using it anymore, and I sold it to a neighbor who lives about uh, four and a half miles away. Uh, he's a John Deere salesman I've had a good relationship with for years, and purchased many of the John Deere things you see in our, in our videos off of. And I sold this to him because he farms about 300 acres, and uh, he has a 7520 uh, John Deere with a Soundguard body on it. And it's a, it's a bit much for that tractor, but uh, he does pull it on his bottoms just to bury some residue. And like I say, I wasn't using it, so it was easy to it was an easy choice to, to sell to somebody that needed it. Ironically, here I am a few years later. I have some residue to get rid of uh, for going to wheat, and I need something to bury residue. He said, uh, you're, "You're welcome to use it. Just come down, hook onto it." So I did. Uh, got it greased up here, ready to go. Uh, again, this is a soil saver. Uh, I, I think this will be a Series 1. Uh, soil Savory was a series made by Glencoe Manufacturing. And uh, this, this particular machine was the largest of the Glencoe Soil Saver series. The basic frame there would be your base machine. I think they made these, I might actually be bigger than a base machine. I think they made them down to five shanks. And then this one, of course, has got the bigger wing options on it, which had the hydraulic cylinders. When I owned it, I redid uh, a lot of the, the gang, the colder gangs on it. Now, I needed this in a pickle, uh, but if we're going to buy one, which I might be looking at buying one again, I think personally I'm going to buy a John Deere 712 with an actual disc gang in the front. And I'll explain that in a minute. This uh, particular machine is equipped with uh, at the time, they had two they had two shanks. They had these spring-loaded ones. Then they had a standard uh, mount shank. This is the spring-loaded package. And these are a, a four-inch wide twist lay. There's the twist lay. And this front piece is called a frog. Uh, this was a Glencoe exclusive. And I believe the bolt pattern is the same as going on to a John Deere. So you can buy this chunk here. Then you can buy the frog and the four-inch Glencoe twist lay for a John Deere. As you can see, these bolts here bolt through the lay in through here, and these are a shorter bolt, just bolt the frog on. So that way you don't have to buy new twist lays all the time. Because your frogs are gonna be your most uh, prone to wear item on the machine. And you can see how these twist that way, twist the other way. So it's a lay over, lay back. We'll go out and we're going to see if we can drop her in the ground and I'll explain some more about my thoughts on tillage and about this particular machine in general. Enter beast mode. Ah, I love this vent. Sweet machine. Just plays with this chisel. Working great. A little muddy in some places, but still working good. And all I gotta do is preset that at four and a half just because of the chisel of the tractor easily pull it quicker. But all I gotta do is I just trigger in and bump sideways. It goes green light, boom, I'm at my uh, preset speed. I absolutely love the ergonomic layout of this console. And they even got the cell phone holder built in. So I'm gonna attempt to even put my phone on so I can flip around so you guys can speak with me. And uh, should be a good deal. Maybe we can even record some live things for live shows at that point in time. And you can see what I'm doing here. We're just going around and around the field. Uh, still opening up some terraces. This is again is where we're going to be putting wheat. Well, the sun's out now. It's about mid afternoon. I've been filming this in different parts. But uh, it's working really well uh, where the soil is a little drier. And uh, this would be a perfect example, just looking at it right now, of what it you know should look like coming out of the back of the machine. You know, it's got the right ridges. The twist lays are really working well. The uh, fence here, I have it set on four and a half mile an hour. It's just humping away there at 1330 RPM. Not even really panting, it's, it's going good. Yeah, I'm overlapping like crazy because I'm trying to 
look out the back window and film and and uh, not paying attention ahead of me here but uh this uh chisel is about 19 feet wide i think and this is a pretty good mate to this tractor. I, I think if I were to buy one of these chisels, as I mentioned earlier in the video, potentially look at like a 712 John Deere. The 712s had a, a, a disc gang in the front. I actually used real discs, like a, a, a tandem disc. And they were um, an option, but you could also get the colders. When they came out with All right, the camera slipped around there. You guys are going to tell me if you like the camera going this angle or not. Uh, the noises you heard there where the clip left off was actually a telephone call I had on the Bluetooth of this fin. Interesting uh, ringtone that the fin chooses to pipe through. talk about tillage so that's what we're going to talk about uh, the question was what's the best machine to do tillage with I like things like the, the cross dominator this tool for its time era was a very good tool but the, again the reason I'm using this is because we're going to come out here with an 8300 John Deere grain drill which is a single disc opener to cutter and we don't want hair pinning or otherwise we're going to have a bad um, stand now to describe hair pinning that's to press the material with the cutter into the ground and then you end up with uh, under the seeds that dirt residue and you won't have a very good stand of wheat so this machine is not something I would normally use and the reason we don't normally use this is because we can only legally do it once every seven years as part of the farm program and the farm program that we're in you can only till once every seven years or up to like I think it's like 20% of your land every year 15 20 percent something like that so really we just can't we can't till here and there's no real need to our, our soils they just don't really need tillage now the best tillage tool plain and simple put there there isn't one like I say there's some I like but why till um, we've checked it year in year out and I don't see any yield advantage with tillage on our particular soils. Yeah, actually in some places maybe yield disadvantage. This operation I'm doing right now is probably costing ten dollars an acre. You're going to, have to make another pass in the spring. By the time you make the other pass, you're probably talking another ten dollars an acre with the mulch finisher. Again, we'll be doing that this, this fall. But uh, if you were going to go to a soybeans or whatever it is next spring, you know you're, you're going to have twenty dollars an acre in it right now. That's three bushels an acre advantage. A lot of guys will think the tillage is good, but they're not really doing the proper tests either. I have actually went out, went into the ridge, is what I'm working on right now. I've actually split this ridge, flagged it, mapped it, done half of the conventional tillage, done half of the ripping, uh, even tried vertical tillage. Vertical tillage is the only thing that seems to have, half a, have a halfway payoff to it. But, Again, you had to make three bushel acre. The best yield advantage I had with the conventional tillage program was approximately uh, a bushel and a half an acre better on soybeans. And sometimes it's actually been less if you don't get it done quite right, especially if you run into a compaction issue in the spring. There you go, camera starting to focus. So I don't, I don't really recommend tillage. The Great Plains turbo max and then john deere's got a new version out that's very similar to the turbo max those are the only two tillage tools that i would personally run on a normal basis because they put a light amount of material or dirt and chop up the uh, residue but they put a light amount of dirt on top of your their uh, debris material on the ground when you do that you're going to end up getting actinite uh, activities, bacterial breakdown, you know, it's, it's going to make everything a lot better for the, the, the cellulose and breakdown release of the PK and everything into the soils. So it's 
working good. Um, I'm going to try to get some more video here looking out of the back. This is a 15 shank unit. It's about 19 feet wide. I think this particular tractor is 550 PTO horsepower. I've actually seen it on the dyno. The results on the, off the dyno. It's running uh, 2,100 pounds of torque too, according to the uh, specs. But uh, they say they're actually coming out of the factory. They're rated like 1,800, and uh, most of them have been running around 1,200. Anyway, besides that, I think this particular tractor would handle this uh, implement here into about a 26 foot version. Um, that'd be about another six shanks, something like that. So a John Deere, like a 21 shank uh, version. That would be about maximum, you know, for this kind of horsepower rating. We had this on a 9430 when, we, when I owned it. And if you dig back through my archives and my videos, or my older videos, you will see me actually run this thing on 8530 and a 9430. 8530 was not enough horsepower for it. Sun shines all below in the sky this time of year. It makes it hard to see around, but you can see what I've been getting done here. It's working really beautiful. This is a two rank machine, means there's two ranks of uh, front and the rear rank of uh, twist lays. The colders are just a colder to cut it up ahead of it. And again, it's working great, but I think a John Deere with like a three rank layout of the discs would be a little better. Uh, the only way I would run John Deere, there are different spikes you can get at different ends, but I would personally run the 4 inch twist lays because I love the way this lays it over. And these actually are the only type of uh, chisel plow that works for our hill anyway because it leaves little ridges. So if you do get erosion, they kind of act like little individual terraces and you don't get massive erosion all over the place like you do with maybe a, a standard chisel plow. Some guys actually use like field color sweeps, big giant field color sweeps. I don't like those because they, they uh, just the, the job that they do. Well, thanks for riding with me today. If you like that new camera angle the, of you know, the phone holder over there, I can do some different videos in that. Maybe it makes it more personal where it looks like I'm talking to you. And uh, let me know your comments, thoughts there. Or maybe you like watching this stuff. And I gotta get a mount so I can put this outside and get some clips of it running outdoors too. And I may try to do that yet. Yeah. But, uh, thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe, and stay tuned for more. And as a teaser, uh, you're going to be seeing something soon. It has to do with a rectangle, uh, maybe an OLF. And uh, if you're somebody local, you probably already know what I'm talking about. For the rest of you, stay watching.